Hi everyone, thank you for coming out today for Ruby SG Meetup. Um, I'm sorry about my voice, I had it yesterday but I'm losing it. Uh, hopefully I don't lose it during the talk, but let's get started, okay? So today we'll be talking about metaprogramming, the good, the bad, and the weird. So my name is Annabelle and he is Donovan. And we are engineers from Brokata and Vicky. So, uh, Vicky, as some of you might know, uh, we, are, we specialize in serving Asian content for the Western part of the world. So we don't really have a dominant presence here. Yep. So just a visual check, can everyone see this code? If you can't see this code, please like wave. Okay, great, everyone can see this code. Okay, so everyone can see the code now. Awesome. Um, so let us talk about metaprogramming. And I just want to get a good sensing here. Um, who here has heard of metaprogramming? Wow, everyone. Okay, awesome. Maybe through the talk. Okay. Um, and who has done metaprogramming uh, either day to their uh, projects or during their day to day work? <coughs> we have a pretty polarized mix. Uh, but so, metaprogramming as a topic is uh, a pretty controversial one. And we are aware that in the internet, there's a lot of blogs. Uh, articles and resources out there that cover every single aspect of metaprogramming. And, but because we only have 30 minutes here today, we will not attempt to cover every single aspect. We will not even attempt to summarize it. But what we will do is cover the dynamic aspect of metaprogramming. Awesome. Okay. So uh, definitions. Uh, metaprogramming is essentially uh, writing code that modifies uh, language constructs <coughs> at runtime. Um, and a more beginner-friendly version of it would be metaprogramming is simply writing code that generates code at runtime. So now with the definition out of the way, we can get started. So let us suppose that all of us are part of an engineering team. And one day, product comes to us and asks us to develop this feature, specifically a digital pet. And this digital pet is um, pretty special. It is a health nut. It likes doing workout. And so uh, when it does workout, its fitness will increase. So as engineers, we take these product requirements and we convert it to a code. So essentially, digital pet is an object that has the following public methods. Do jogging, do boxing, as well as do weights. So it doesn't take us long to actually implement the code. So over here, we have three public methods that increments the pet's workout uh, fitness, depending on the workout. So uh, we are now uh, fulfilled product's requirements and we go home happy being able to sleep well at night. 24 hours later. <laughs> so product really loved what we did with Digital Pet. So the reason that since Digital Pet is such a health nut, it should be able to do more than three workouts. It should be able to do all these workouts. And to make things even more interesting, why not add more routines to the workout? So instead of just increasing the pet's uh, fitness, why not increase the stamina as well? So as engineers, we once again take the product requirements and convert it to code. So now what this means is as a digital pet, it is able to do workouts increases its fitness and stamina and its repertoire of public methods has increased as well. So this was the previous implementation. It is a digital pet that can do only three workouts and now we need to add in products change requirements. So first, we add in the change in uh, the sequence. So basically, Digital Pet is now able to increase its stamina and fitness by working out. And now we add in the six workouts. So I had to like, minimize the code to make everything fit, but you get a point. It is very verbose. Uh, there's a lot of code written just to add in six more workouts. So like, the question will arise, right? Like, can we actually make the code shorter? So let us take a closer look at the code. If you look at the code, we can try to identify patterns. So over here, it is very obvious to us that all the workouts do exactly the same thing. It increases stamina and fitness. The only thing that is different is the amount of increment of stamina as well as fitness. So this is configuration. So now we are trying to consolidate the configuration based on the workouts. So there's a data structure that we can use. Can anyone give a shout as to what we can use over here? Hash. 
Exactly. So we can use the hash to actually consolidate the workouts configuration. And by doing so, we increase the legibility of the code. Because if a new engineer comes along to digital pad, it is able to just look at the first part of the code and easily grasp that, okay, we have nine workouts and each workout has stamina and fitness and different stamina and fitness points. Easy. And on top of that, we are able to change and make maintainability of the code a lot easier. If you want to add any new workouts, we just need to add the configuration into the hash map. So back to the static behavior. So now we need to find a way to actually consolidate this static behavior. One way to do it is to put the behavior into another method. So in this case, we do workout. And do workout would be able to increase stamina and fitness. So by consolidating the static behavior, we are able to change um, any of the product requirements. Uh, so for instance, if the digital pad now wants to increase health stats, for example, we can simply go to do workout and add the increment in health stats. But, sorry, but if we look at the code, it's actually a lot, uh, not much sh shorter. In fact, it's actually longer because we have the configuration and we want to ask ourselves, is there a way to actually reduce this code even more? So what we actually want to do here, like maybe if there's some magical method, it will allow us to have uh, the method name, the method behavior, put it through some magical method, and then it generates the method for us. So for Ruby developers, do you guys have like a suggestion as to what we can use? L louder? Define method. Exactly. So define method. We can use define method um, to we can use define method to actually uh, generate the code for us dynamically. So for those of us who is not very familiar with Ruby, what define method actually does, it is actually dynamic method generation. So we simply need to pass in the method name. So in this case, it will be do boxing and the method behavior, which in this case is do workout. And it magically, okay, I'm, it's not magic, but essentially it, <laughs> it generates the method for us. So it's equivalent to writing define uh, do boxing, do workout and the details. So with that uh, application of dynamic method generation, we are able to shorten the amount of code that we need to write, but in this case by half. And with just 27 lines of code, we are able to accommodate products change requirements, and we can then move on to our next feature. Except one week later. <laughs> so we did a great job with Digital Pad, and product liked it so much, they decided um, to add in two new requirements. So the first requirement is, Instead of having all nine workouts, they're having the exact same routine. Why not make it mirror real life a bit more? So in this case, each workout should now have its own specific set of routine. So what this means is that previously we had nine workouts and we had a single routine. So now with the change in product requirements, we have nine workouts and nine specific unique routines. So if you look at our previous implementation of the code and the previous product requirements, using dynamic method generation uh, would it be able to fulfill product requirements because all the nine workouts have the exact same routine. But with the change in product requirements and nine specific routines, we can no longer use dynamic method generation because the way we wrote it leverages on the fact that all nine workouts have the same routine. So what can we do? Okay, unfortunately, we have to blow it up. <laughs> so like you can see, we have nine workouts and then um, the code will become long like the previous case. But still, we fulfill product's criteria and we go home happy. Except not yet, because product has a second requirement. Since Digital Pad is so awesome, why not move it from command line prototype up to the web? And in order to do so, we need to support remote calls. So what this means is that we need to add in a controller. Uh, we, in this case, we choose the action uh, do workout. And in designing the endpoint, we have several options, one of which is to have nine endpoints because we have nine workouts, right? But that would introduce a maintainability issue. So if we take a step back and we think about better implementation, we could actually have one endpoint and pass the activity into the parameters. So now we have nine public methods, each doing a specific routine, and we have one pet controller with one endpoint. So with the model and nine specific routines and the controller. So if we actually think about what the do workout action is doing, it is essentially taking an activity 
and deciding which method to call based on the activity. So if the activity is yoga, you would call do yoga on the model. If the activity is boxing, you would call do boxing. So with that behavior in mind, can anyone suggest a way of implementing the pet controller? Anyone? No, no, don't, 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 don't jump the gun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we go step by step. So the first step is switch case. It is. It, we can use switch case in every single language, and this works. It works perfectly fine. So depending on the activity that was passed into the endpoint, we can call the respective workout uh, method. So this works fine, but as usual, we're kind of nitpicky. It's kind of long. It's kind of verbose. It's tedious to write, and we ask ourselves. Is there a better way to do it? And since we are Ruby developers, it turns out there is. But let us look at uh, the code again. So if we look at the code, we try to identify patterns again. So in this uh, code, we see that the method follows a pattern. It is always do underscore activity. So with this pattern in mind, we can sort of like generate a formula. So we can essentially generate the method name dynamically. But that is not all, right? Our job is not, not done. If you look at it, like previously, we are able to go call like current pet object dot the method name. But now with the dynamically method, the dynamically generated method name, we are no longer able to do that. So is there a way for us to do that? Sam. Yes, Sam. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Cool, so we can call, we can use uh, Ruby's dynamic dispatch to call send on the object. And just a show of hands, how many of us use uh, send in our day-to-day -day work? Okay, Matt does, obviously. Okay. Uh, yeah, so with that, we can actually shorten the amount of code that we need to write. By how much? By a third. And I think that's pretty amazing. With just seven lines of code, we are able to fulfill products criteria. And we go home happy. But before I go home, I will probably pass on my code with dynamic method generation and dynamic dispatch to my tech lead, Donovan, for a code review. Seriously? You get your... Oh. Hey. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I hope you. Um, okay. Hi everyone. My name is Donovan. Uh, I hope everyone has been enjoying the digital pet implementation by Annabelle so far, and have been enjoying the magic of meta programming, which allow us to perform a certain action with much lesser code. Okay. So that's so with much lesser code, we can fulfilling the same implementation, uh, the same purpose, right? So that sounds like a very good thing. I think it's like a free lunch, right? But as all we all know, there's no free lunch in the world. So like, how much is this free lunch? Okay, so let's revisit the code that we re uh, implemented by Annabelle earlier. Okay, okay, beautiful code, right? Very readable. Okay, Annabelle actually, besides writing very beautiful code, she actually already added the unit test for the code. Like, actually, I type of engineer submit code without test, right? Okay, so. So by you saying unit tested, what we mean is for the model, we will check for each of the individual method whether it's going to fulfill what it intended to do. For example, do jogging will be us. We ensure do jogging will do warm up spring. Do boxing will do uh, practice punches, footwork drills. On the controller side, uh, unit testing means that if a value of uh, the params activity being passed in, for example, yoga, the corresponding do yoga method will be triggered on top of the current uh, the current pet model. Okay? So in this case we do we are not doing our uh, integration test for the controller, which a lot of Ruby developers lo love to do. Anyone have any like concern about why we are not doing integration test? Okay, I'll just explain anyway. Okay, so uh, if we are okay assuming we are writing integration test for this controller, assume we are okay so given the scale of what Anavia has been describing, the product keep getting more and more feature into the into an application, the product, right? So assuming we're going to have like 20 to 30 activities, it means that our controller, the specs of the controller will keep going up. So every changes or updates to the logic of any activities 
will be need to be reflected inside the specs of the controller, which we already covered inside the unit test of the model. Okay, so basically we are doing double work without having any additional benefit. Okay, cool. We are very region engineer besides writing unit tests, we are also doing like manual testing. So we do a post for our activity yoga to endpoint, we got 200. So we have, so technically life looks good, right? Let's deploy, what could go wrong? Okay, <laughs> one day later. Then you can take one day for the spec to, uh, the stat to come in. So actually life is not always good. It kind of like sometimes you hit the bumps similar to our monitoring graph. Okay, so, okay, as good engineer, we're just going to uh, check our logs. I think at this point of time, everyone will know like, oh, I already foreseen it when I see your code. Like very naively assuming life is very beautiful, all the, all the uh, valid input will be passing in, right? Okay. So, so this kind of scenario happening is because there's an invalid input being passed into our controller. Okay, this uh, invalid input categorized into scenarios, so, uh, two categories, one is typo. So like, uh, Toga is passing instead of, uh, instead of yoga, or doxing being passing instead of boxing. The other case would be uh, our API consumer are very confident with the capability of our system. So they try, they think we can support like some further activity which we are not yet able to support. So kind of like jumping or punching. Okay, so for these kind of scenarios, if the invalid input being passed in for activity, the, the corresponding do activity, which is in this case, do toga, being caught on top of the current path, which doesn't have that method. That's why it resulted in the no method error. Okay, that is very simple. It's very straightforward case, right? Okay, no surprise here. So technically, because of this, it's result in 500, which is not going, to, not going to be very good for our user. So technically, life is kind of bad, but it can go worse. Okay, I can tell you how. Well, let me tell you another story. So you know our product is very hardworking, right? They keep adding more features into our, our product. So our, our product team, they're very, they very satisfied with what our free do yoga version do, uh, is performing. So they decided to add a subscription model. So basically, any user who paid for a subscription will be able to enjoy our do paid yoga with some kind of like additional benefit. So you got like kind of like extra stamina, extra fitness and stuff. So as you can see, do pay yoga is some kind of a premium feature, so it shouldn't be directly triggered without the subscription check. And we are very careful engineer, and of course we put inside the private method sections. Cool. So kind of we are safe, right? We are safe, is it? Mm. Okay. Like at the end of the month, our finance team have a fun uh, audit. Okay, kind of like the monthly audit. So they were figuring out like our total our total revenue and our paid yoga class attendance doesn't add up. And we had a very fun time debugging. Okay. So one of the way so like one of the things we did was we wait, what I'm saying is like we are very efficient, no? it's not really happening in Vicky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we we go back to and check our logs and we found out like, something very interesting. There was someone who was really passing paid yoga into our API endpoint. Okay? I'm, I, I can very assure you that this is not a typo. Like whoever can typo paid yoga, right? Okay, so instead, when paid yoga being passed in, the do paid yoga method will actually trigger directly using the method send. Because you know what? Send actually allowed the, the, a method, allowed an external object to trigger both private and public methods of another objects. Okay, so in this case, because do paid yoga is a valid action uh, and in a method of, of uh, the digital pet. So of course we got a 200. That seems to be a very positive indication, right? And like no 500, life is good. But actually it's a security breach. Okay, so think, so, okay, never mind. <laughs> so technically, it's better for the code to be broken and do nothing rather than is do successfully doing something that is not expected or allowed to do. Everyone agree? Okay. So this this kind of issue was because of the private method, uh, the private gate uh, validation was was bypassed. 
So the very easy fix is we know that send will trigger both private and public methods. So we're going to use an alternate, which is public send. This is kind of similar to send, but it scoped down our, our method to only public methods. Okay. So now our blue page yoga is safe. Okay. So who? So I mean, like those whoever doing send, like your day to day work, right? Uh, I hope you will start converting to do like public send. So you're going to save your life by a lot of times. Okay. Uh, cool. So life start getting better. But let's not forget. We still have another, like all the invalid input we mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's go ahead and review them. So at the moment, after we do our pub public send fix, our paid yoga actually turned into a 500, which is okay. Okay, so, so like, anyway, everyone will start, start thinking like, uh, if you're already following the switch cases that we all originally used, that originally implemented by Annabelle, we kind of like already like uh, not sh uh, we shouldn't be uh, we wouldn't hit all that kind of problems of like uh, invalid input of typo uh, or unsupported input as well as like private method being triggered right because here we're using switch ca switch cases we explicitly declare what is supported and what's not okay but I hope. And we all okay, okay switch case is longer but it's safe. Dynamic dispatch is concise but it's not so safe. But I hope during the presentation, Annabelle has already persuaded everyone that we're going to uh, accept, we're going to enjoy the conciseness of meta programming. So how about we're going to go ahead and try to solve the not so safe problems together? Okay. Okay, so let's visit our error again. So the problem now is no meta error will resulted in 500, which is fine because 500 means that there's some mean server error, right? Server error means that there's something unexpected happening with your system. It's an unforeseen thing. But now, as we've already foreseen, well, uh, because we already seen it, right? So it's better that we handle it properly and raise a more user friendly error or like more better error code, uh, HTTP co uh, response code. So, an easy way is to catch uh, to a rescue no matter error and raise with invalid activity and then our controller upon then will re will respond with a different uh, a corresponding response code which is like 400 41 43 or 422 like unprocessable entity that will much better for the system right cool uh okay mm -hmm. okay so like yeah, in order for us to do it it just takes us two lines. Okay. Okay, doesn't matter. You just see that there's a two, only two lines that are different between the two implementation. Okay. But uh, is there anything wrong with this code? Okay. As you can start realizing, rescue meta error here, no meta error here, actually is a catch all. Okay, so meaning that you're going to catch every single no matter error happening within the above block. Okay, so if, so at the moment we are kind of very confident because we only have three lines above that line. So we kind of like a visual check. Okay, uh, the first two lines, there's no way it can trigger this kind of error, so we are safe. So the only one can trigger it is a public send one. But how about like, as our, as our product keep growing, we, uh, our logic will get more, more and more complicated. We have more and more code. And some other line along the way might already start throwing no matter error. And by having a, this kind of catch all, we will have a fun time debugging silent failure in the future. Okay, so how about we go down a more, more logical part, a more logical path, which is validation. So like kind of like validate things first before we actually execute it. Okay. Okay. So because of, uh, because of the violation of activity are tightly coupled with the kind of activities that the digital pet can perform, how about we add it to a model instead? So it's kind of like easier for us to reuse. Okay, so this is like a very simple validation logic. So it technically it do kind of the same. Okay, so like when the method doesn't exist, it will throw invalid activities. But it will be a validation instead of a catch-all. Okay?
Okay, so this is how we apply it to our controller. Okay, this is simple, right? Okay, so technically with validation, we are able to safeguard against not supported as well as typo. Because if Toga, a Toga, a like do a Toga doxings or jumping or punching being passed into a controller, the validation already, the method is no longer there. It's not there. So validation will reject the uh, action first. Okay, so life is good, let's deploy. One day later. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's check our logs. At the moment everyone is like, what, right? <laughs> this is very strange. Okay, let's look at our code. Okay, so actually I forgot to tell you a story. Because our product is, uh, we are having a very big product team. So actually, while we are busy working on and improving our uh, workout features, aspect of things, like the, the, what I call it, the squat. Okay, another squat has started working on a, a more like a education, our education squat, so we can call like other features on the same model. Okay, so it started introducing like, do homework, which kind of like it coincident, coincidentally, the same pattern we are the way naming that our workout squat name it. Okay, it's kind of lucky, you know, because like because this do homework method taking an argument, that's why you that's why you throw the error for you. Imagine it is do homework, doesn't take in any argument, it will, it will be executed successfully. And kind of like you can do your homework while visiting your workout class. It's kind of like you can go to a canteen and withdraw money, right? It's like very fun. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, so, so what is this? Uh, okay, yeah. So, what is it telling us? So, technically, homework is not an activity. So, technically, but however, do homework bypasses the validation because do homework is actually a valid method of current path. Correct? But, however, it's, it's not really a valid workout activity. Okay, so, yeah, there's some, so technically, there are some mismatching in like the our purpose and our implementation, right? Okay, so let's call this kind of a problem is like public method attack, so like kind of a opposite with our private method attack. Okay, I name it on my own, so doesn't matter. Okay, so, so let's, vi okay, how, how, so, so how can we solve this kind of problem, right? This kind of problem, so like, let's re revisit our purpose again. Our validation method supposed to take in uh, activity and check whether the activity is a valid workout activity. Okay, it got nothing to do with whether the method exists or not. Okay, because everyone know like if we use like method missing, we can have it out of the box. Correct, right? so like it doesn't really need the method to be there. Okay, so how about we stick to the purpose? Okay, so with this explicit check against the valid uh, the list of valid activities we are able to safeguard against uh, the the value that which are not uh, what I call it it's not a workout activities okay so this one is like is okay okay never mind let's move on okay so this okay so cool so we are already solving one more problems let's deploy Okay, one day later. Hmm. Okay. This is getting more interesting, right? Because earlier, okay, and you see Pilate was actually, it was actually in our activity list. So we come back and we check our code. See that our validation logic was correct. The method name uh, construction is correct. Everything seems to where is seem to be all fine, right? Okay, so actually we go deeper and look at our digital pet implementation and we figure out one fact that do Pilate actually is missing. Okay, so this happened actually because the engineer, when he commit, uh, when he implemented the feature, he added Pilates into the list of activities without implementing it. Because he forget to implementing it, of course, there's no specs for it. Okay. But like that is not a very strange thing, given we have like 20 to 30 activities. It's possible, I will not say easy, I will say possible that engineer will miss out one or two. But it's not the time for us to blame the engineer for being careless. It's the company that's going to pay the price because the product is not functional. 
So as part of the engineering team, we supposed to, we need to find a way to be able to identify this kind of problems before it being deployed to production, right? Correct. Of course, when you put the production to the five hundred, we will know. So, anyone have any like suggestions? Okay. Now, my left me. Let me re uh, recap the problems. The problem having, we are having right now is because we have two sets of data. The first set is the list of activities, which is considered as a sort of truth. The second set of data is the list of manually defined method for each of the activities. So the problem happening because of the two set of data is mismatched. Okay, so how can we solve these problems? How can we detect it before we deploy the production? Anyone? I heard something. Get the defined methods automatically. Do the main method? Get the defined methods. Get the defined Get method. The kind of correct. Yeah. But like Okay, so one of the ways we can solve it is to stick to the purpose, right? Our purpose is to be able to ensure that for each activities, there are a corresponding do activity method for it. Okay, so we can just write a simple test cases and they're going to cover our cover the that box. Yeah. Okay? It looks simple, right? But it's going to save us a lot of time. Okay, so sticking to the purpose will really save your life. Okay, um, so let's uh, re review again. So by adding, uh, by using FL, uh, public send, adding proper validation and test, we are able to cover like, this, all of these kind of problems that introduced because we're using dynamic dispatch. But is that so? Okay, one month later. Okay, so uh, this is not a product requirement. Okay, I promise, this is an engineering requirement. So for every engineering team, what we usually do is clean up the legacy code, right? So for those who doesn't know, legacy code means that the code that written long ago for a purpose, and that purpose was deprecated. The the code is still there. It means that the method is defined, but no longer being used. Okay? So these are very common uh, engineering tasks in every single engineering team. So what our engineering, uh, we assign one of our engineer, okay, let's call him John. Okay, so John visited our favorite digital pet file. And he, okay, very fun. If you find out that do yoga is a public method. When you say a public method, what does John think, right? A public method means that the method is supposed to be explicitly called somewhere. It means that you're supposed to search for it, right? So of course you go ahead and search for it. And you can only find the definition by matching that string. So what does it mean? So the definition is the legacy code, right? <laughs> so called John go ahead and deprecate the code. And of course our aspect break because we written our aspect earlier. Okay? But of course, this actually show us one of the very big problem, which is the searchability issues. This is actually a very big trouble for maintaining a code base. Anyone is that, does it sound some, like familiar to anyone? Okay, very familiar problem, right? So anyone have like any suggestion for this or any best practices to handle these kind of scenarios? Okay, done. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's visit it again. We actually, okay, because we already discussed earlier, so we all know that do yoga was actually caught, but in a dynamic way, in our controller using dynamic dispatch. But the problem is, the do yoga was formed dynamically using do activity, which is totally not searchable. Okay? Correct. So, okay, so in Viki, what we do is we establish certain rules to support our searchability, to improve our maintainability of the code. Okay, so the, that two major rules is same method should only be used. Oh, sorry, I messed up. Um, public sense, sorry. Can you forget this? I look at all of this. So basically, if you want to access a method across object, you can surely use public send, but not send, because send can actually trigger private methods, okay? Which is that trigger a security breach that we mentioned earlier. The second rule is only public, only method to be explicitly called across context, which is across files, across objects, should stay as public method, 
Okay, it means that it is not going and it not being called anywhere like what I'll do yoga earlier. It should stay private because it's not searchable. Okay, is the rule clear? Okay. Okay, so let's apply the rule to our scenarios. So because do yoga is not being called anywhere that like explicitly, so we're going to bring do yoga private. But if you bring do yoga private, our controller will not be able to access it using public send. Correct. So we kind of dilemma, right? Anyone have any suggestion? Okay. Okay, so one of the ways that we can do it is introducing a purpose-specific abstraction layer. So what we can do is we can introduce a do workout method inside digital pad. Uh, after we move all of the do yoga, do jogging, do pet yoga, private. So this will be our in public interface. This public interface will take activity in and do the magic of meta programming to trigger the corresponding methods, it private methods. Okay. So what by doing this, we are making wait, wait my encapsulation. Okay. So by doing this, we are encapsulating the meta the technique of meta programming within digital pet itself. Okay, so when we apply it to controller, it looks just like a normal method. Okay, so by encapsulating uh, uh, meta programming inside a single object, we are able to enjoy the benefit of meta programming without compromising our searchability of the code. Because now our new workout is searchable. Correct. Okay, so to summarize, we are aware of there are a lot more techniques to, per, to do metaprogramming in Ruby. But because of time constraint, we only cover dynamic method and dynamic mis, uh, dispatch. And I hope at the end of the session, everyone, we already showed that everyone of the, all the like, kind of possible issues that we want to face if we want to use metaprogramming in Ruby. And we hope that our, our recommendation will help you minimize or eliminate the all these problems so you can enjoy the goodness of metaprogramming thank you okay okay, okay.